Um, so now we have a quorum. We'll start the meeting. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we are alive and being recorded. So. Okay. Yeah, I normally just uh, allow everyone to be panelists and uh, to speak freely. And I guess I can't do that unless I know who the person is from now on. So that was my fault. Um, I'll just... Sorry, okay, other things going on too. Um, I'm gonna, can someone else share the agenda actually? That would make it easier. I'm trying to find it. Yeah. Okay. I'm taking notes, so I can't yeah. do it. Um, almost there. No, I can't. Uh... Julian's coming out in and out, but he's here. It's just his video is coming in and out. Okay. <clears throat> All right, while we do that, let's collect ours. Uh, Shoshana. You're muted. Four hours. Okay. Ellen? You're muted too, Ellen. Ah, oh, there we Three. go. Three. Three. Bennett? Three. Me, I probably had uh, 15. Uh, Julian? Ten. Ten. Okay, and hopefully we'll get from, did I miss someone? Sarah's not here. I uh, can't, and, and Britt, right, she's gonna put her hours in. Okay, good, so there's the agenda. Uh, hopefully everyone can see that. And uh, do we approve the October minutes? All in favor, thumbs up. Again, Julian, can't see you. Shoshana? Yep, I approve. All right, minutes approved. Uh, Bennett, do you want to take over minutes? Right now, Ellen's doing it. I'm ha happy to do it. I just got to pull up. It's okay. Um, <laughs> I've already started. It's fine. Okay, yep. good. Okay, thank you. Sure. All right. Um, the chairs, we've, oh, um, so well, let's see who's, we do have someone else in the, there's too many things going on here. Brooks Ballinger, is that a real person? How do I find that out? I guess I'll allow them to talk. And uh, Brooks, if you could introduce yourself. Hello. Yes, hi. Hi. Uh, my name is Brooks and I live in Amherst and uh, I, um, I've just joined up with your committee. Great. Well, welcome. If you want to put on your camera, I can allow that. Yeah, my camera doesn't seem to be working. I don't know what's up with that. Okay, that's fine. And um, Sophie is a student who's visiting us. Um, yeah. Do you want to say more, Sophie? I am really interested in... I mean, forestry in general, urban forestry um, as sort of a subset of that. And I would love to just like listen to how that manifests um, in a civic capacity. Um, I'm also, I should say, I'm not gonna put my camera on either. I am um, at work delivering mail as I listen in. Okay, that's fine. Well, thank you for joining us. And uh, both Brooks and Sophie, if you have any questions, please feel free to either raise your hand or just speak up. 
Okay. Right. And we'll move on to the agenda. So the first thing is the chair's report. Um, <clears throat> not a lot to report that's not in the agenda elsewhere. Um, we've gotten a few emails from people, uh, someone uh, requesting, and Alan, we should talk about this at some point during the meeting, some uh, replacement trees. There are a lot of ash trees that are dying along Applewood and Bay Road and near there. Um, also heard from the Amherst Garden Club, uh, they're wanting to sort of reband and working on pollinator network stuff. We'd love to join us at some point. In December, Eversource is going to send someone to talk to us about tree clearing along their lines. And um, the other thing is um, we used to reach out to a lot of the other committees and we haven't been doing that much, but I think now's a good time to contact the planning board, attend one of their meetings, you know, invite town council members to join us and things like that. So let's talk about it. It's not on the agenda for this month, but maybe next month we can do that as a full agenda item. Okay. Uh, that's all I have. Julian? Yeah, I uh, I have three things. A, I've noticed Eversource has done quite a bit of tree work around town or their contractor has. B, is that Amherst College appears to have planted, unless the town did, um, three trees uh, where the Norway maple was removed. Um, and then the last thing that I had was um, just, I guess, curiosity about, um, about the new project on Ball Lane and if any trees would be included or if we'd have a chance to plant there or that sort of thing. Alan, do you have something about that? I'll say uh, I'll start with the last one, the Ball Lane one. I mean, if it, if the trees are planted in the public way, we can do that. Um, it looks like it has has some, you know, tree planting going on in the development itself. Um, but along Ball Lane and along um, Pulpit Hill, we could definitely plant, um, you know, trees. Route 63 is actually maintained by the, the state, Money Road. Um, so if we wanted to plant along that, we just need to get permission from the state to do that. Yeah. I know in the development plans for that, they're planning to keep some of the standing trees as much as possible and add new ones. So, yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Julian. Uh, tree warden report. Yeah, I don't have um, a lot to report. I mean, obviously, we had a very successful tree planting on uh, West Pomeroy, West Street. Um, that was a big help in getting those trees in. Um, the um, Tree City USA Awards, um, Tree, City's, Tree City USA application with the National Arbor Day Foundation um, is uh, due next month. So if uh, the committee wants to tally all of your activities, write up a report, send me pictures of what you did. Um, we should be able to go for a growth award this year. Um, and I just need to um, document all that and go for a growth award. Um, I'll then- start, I'll start pulling together a, um, a overview of what we've done if anyone wants to send me photos from any of the events we've done this year, that'd be great. And then, yeah, the, you know, it's the newsletter, you know, um, PDF of the newsletter items, um, anything the committee's done. So it all counts. Uh, we'll be spending $20,000 of the $40,000 that was put into a capital account um, to do tree work. Um, I'll be putting some tree removal and stump grinding out to bid um, in the coming weeks. And we'll have the 20,000 to buy trees. Um, Sugarloaf Nurseries, I think most of you know, um, donated uh, 12 or 13 trees um, last month. And we have them, most of them have been planted. Some of them we healed in uh, down at the new nursery <clears throat> off of Station Road um, at the horse barn. So if you, you know, drive down there, 
take a look, you'll see some trees healed in with mulch. Um, they're large uh, root balls, uh, bald and burlap trees. Um, and uh, looking forward to get those planted next spring. Um, I'm sorry, been... Alan, Alan, before you move on to the next thing, I'm just going to make a note um, for um, the newsletter that, mm -hmm. that seems like something we want to acknowledge, right? Um, yes. So Sugarloaf gave us how many? I can send you the exact number. I think it was 13, 13 trees. Okay. Um, nice trees. I mean, they're big. They're, you know, some of them um, were the size of the trees that we were planting uh, on Saturday. So cool. um, very, very That's generous. That's great. But I can okay. send you the exact species and everything. Um, to put it yeah, if you think about it, great. If I don't get it, at least if I have the number of trees and I can I can work with that. So okay. I'd like to it'd be nice if the committee um could recognize them, you know, personally uh or in you know on the webpage or in the newspaper or something that they um you know are making these donations. I mean these they're four hundred dollars, three hundred dollar trees, so it's it's pretty good. I I will take the action I'll write uh, you know, this is one of those feel good letters to the editor in the Gazette, right? Yes. Um, they probably published that in the bulletin or something. Um, so I'll take the job of doing that. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be nice to acknowledge yeah. their generosity. Yeah, I agree. That was certainly very generous. And they looked like really good, healthy trees um, on Saturday, too. Mm hmm. Yeah, they were. Uh, little, I think that yeah. they were a little long in the uh, in the grow bags. But other than that, they were good trees. Yeah, yeah. we'll make a note of that and a thank you. <laughs> um, Shoshana, can you also post that on Facebook and Julian on Insta? Yes. Maybe also, um, uh, I would also like uh, um, photos from that. I can send you the photos. I took some photos of the um, trees being loaded up and being healed in at the nursery. So. All right, cool, thanks. Um, and then we, we did uh, get a lot of input. I've been getting a lot of requests from the Rambling Road, um, Hampshire Village, Applewood, Upper Orchards area where the um, developer planted a combination of ash, pin oak and nori maple. And um, the ash trees are all dying and, and one by one we're taking them down. Um, and last, not this past summer, two summers ago, we did do, we did plant part of Rambling Road and we went down country corners up to West Street. Um, so we've, you know, we kind of started the replanting there. I'm discussing with, um, beginning the discussion with the um, property manager um, along Rambling Road in Applewood, um, the possibilities of setback plantings because there's not a lot of space in the grass belt. Uh, it's, we've got a lot of sidewalk damage from the pin oak trees and the ash trees. The sidewalk's almost impassable. Um, and I'd like to see if we could do a planting in the setback um, permission from the property owner. Um, so we're working on that. And that might you know, potentially next, next planting, second Saturday planting round, uh, we can uh, so rambling road in again. I think that's that pretty much covers all the highlights. All right, thank you. Uh, the treasurer is not in attendance, um, but Britt couldn't make it because of work and Sarah also. Um, I was wondering, maybe we should think about changing the time that we meet. And I don't wanna do that today, partly because we didn't advertise that on the agenda, but also because two people are not here who couldn't make it today. So I'm going to put that on the agenda for next month to see if we can come up with a different day or time that works for everyone. So think about your schedules. Maybe we can't change it, but maybe we can. So, um, all right, uh, social media, Shoshana and Julian. Yeah, uh, I, <clears throat> um, I posted for our planting. Um, and I think I posted something else as well. Um, it's been kind of slow and steady. Um, and I'll be posting about our thank you after I get all the information 
I bought that in all the pictures and such. Yeah, pretty much same here. Okay. Um, one thing is I put it on Facebook today, the meeting. So I think if you can, a few days before the meeting, post that the meeting's coming up as well as the plantings, that would be great. Okay. Good. I see Julian. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. Uh, presentations and discussions, the library trees. Is there any follow-up with that or are we done with that issue for... Anyone? I guess we're done with it. <laughs> Six o'clock. Yeah, second Saturday work days. Um, I think we had a good year this year, doing the nursery, doing the November planting. Um, I'm pretty pleased. Anyone have any other comments about it? Yeah, same here. I think we got good attendance for most of them. We did quite a lot of trees, and um, it's certainly great to have the help of Alan and his crew. Um, so that was great. And, oh, the other thing I would just note is that we sort of broadened out where we did in town this year, I think more than past years, at least from what I remember, um, which is good and we should keep doing it. Good. Do we have a count of how many trees we planted this year? I don't have the count with me, but that's easy enough to get. Um, it was down from previous years, um, but we did a number of trees. And it's good people, information to have to promote ourselves. <laughs> yeah. And Sophie and Brooks, we do tree work days every second Saturday of the month from April through November. So if we're not planting trees, we're taking care of trees you're already planted or working in the nursery. We started a nursery last month on the workday in South Amherst. So we're going to this grow is trees. Just a thought, but in the winter months, if there's snow on the ground, we can't really do anything. But would it help if there's not snow on the ground to do mulching, pruning, that sort of thing on Saturdays? Pruning is, you know, dormant season is always a great time to do pruning. So um, as long as you're not, you know, trudging through snow um, on the side of the road, <laughs> It's, it's, you know, it's doable. Well, do we want to try to schedule a December, a January, second Saturday planting? I do not want to do one in December. Um, Maybe in December. start in January. Yeah. Yeah, December is very busy. All right, let's... um. Yeah, let's try the second Saturday in January. We'll do a, a pruning project somewhere. Great. All right. Does anyone have that date handy? Thirteenth. Okay. Okay. And if the weather's miserable, then we don't have to go out, but uh yeah. We'll try not to cancel it. That's my goal. <clears throat> okay. Um, any other comments on work days? We should start thinking of where we want to plant for the next year. Sounds like we have an idea for starting and we have the nursery to work on. But uh, it'd be good to be able to publish a list saying, here's what we're going to be working on this year. We used to do that. All right. Uh, town tree inventory. Anything new on that, Alan? Nothing new, unfortunately. Okay. And the town tree tour uh, it was a good success. We only had about a dozen people, but um, everyone really enjoyed it. Uh, Paul Bockelman was there again, which was nice. And uh, he really enjoyed it. And we were walking uh, by the Lord Jeff and uh, these two women were walking by and heard us, overheard us talking about a tree and they asked what we were doing. And they ended up joining the entire tree tour. That's cool. They really enjoyed it. So it was very nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was is fun. That, is that down? Is, is that down from the previous year? Because you say twelve people. I'm like, that sounds like a success to me. That sounds good. <laughs> yeah. We we actually had I think forty seven at the first. Oh, I yeah. forgot that. Yeah. We weren't yeah. expecting that either. So yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great, and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Say that again. I thought it was great and I learned a lot. Oh, good. All right. Thank you, Brooks. Yeah. All right. Um, anyway, um, I don't know if we'll do it again, but uh, we probably should. But uh, it's a lot of effort and there's not a difference. I don't think we're going to do it in the summer, so it's spring or fall. So maybe maybe we'll wait a year and do it every year and a half. How's that sound, Ellen? <laughs> That's fine. I, we, I mean, we've talked about doing different locations or different routes. Yeah, we could do that too. All right, let's let's think about that, um, especially okay. if you have some more time at some point. <laughs> uh, good. Uh, the nursery. Um, probably not much we need to do right now, but um, once we start planting trees, we'll need to be keeping it mown and water the trees. And I thought it'd be good if we have some way of scheduling that. Um, Julian, you mentioned you could bring a lawnmower over. I, I have a little ego push mower and would be happy to go down there, I don't know, once a month and cut it back. Doesn't have to be perfect, but at least walkable. Yeah. Um, anything else we might need to do for maintenance, Alan? Uh, yeah, I mean, just like watering is the most important thing. And, and if we can keep the grass mowed, that'd be great. Helps keep the mice down. Um, and yeah, just keeping an eye on it. So if something falls over or looks like it needs repotting, you know, re replanting in the grow bag or something, someone, someone can keep track of it. Any, um, any danger of uh, deer or other critters chewing on these? Great question. Yes. Uh, we will probably be using some kind of um, trunk guard to keep the mice and voles and other critters from chewing on the, the trunk flares. Um, and the deer we're hoping will be uh, discouraged by the fence from the old horse corral. It's not deer proof, but um, they'll have to work to get through it. Um, okay. Good. So that's something we should be thinking about towards spring is how to how we can do the work of mowing it and, and uh, keeping it ready. So maybe Julian's doing all the mowing, but just in case, uh, yeah. Good. Um, I think it's a great project. I'm is really water to... available at the building, or would we have to bring seven one in and water it? Hoping that the water will be working at the building. Um, okay, great. It had water. The meter was pulled because um, the building was abandoned. Um, so we have to reconnect the meter to it. Um, and hopefully, you know, nothing, there's no other <laughs> thing has happened since the water was just abandoned. Um, so um, there may be some expense in fixing water lines. Um, but there is a, um, what they call the yard hydrant um, on the side of the building facing the horse corral. So, great. Okay. Is that on your list to look at for the spring, Alan? Yes, it is. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, UMass interns, Britt's not here, so there's no word on that. Uh, the Mary Maple table. Um, I think that was Britt. Alan, you were going to do a label, and then Britt was going to yep. kind of things at the library. I can do that whenever, yeah, anytime, okay. whenever I think we have a date. Deadlines okay. help me. <laughs> okay, well, let's wait till Britt's back and we'll keep it on the agenda for next okay. week. Okay. Um, so possible state funding through Mindy Dom. She um, has money, she calls earmarks, that she can put to anything in her district. And it's a good chunk of money. And so she had talked to me when we were trying to get the uh, town line item budget thing and said, if they don't give you the full amount, then I can give you money from my account. So we did get the full amount. I don't think we're urgent for money right now, but if we have a project that could use some funds, the deadline to approach her is the end of the year or approximately the end of the year. So um, we should be thinking about that. Um, I can't think of any reason to, ask for those funds this year. But if you guys have an idea, let's talk about it next month. And future reference, if we're gonna, especially we're gonna be working on areas that are not town street trees where we can't necessarily use our funding for, 
that might be another use for that. So, all right. Uh, urban forestry management plan. I've not made any progress on that. I'm, I'm hoping that things will slow down and I'll be able to spend some time this winter on that um, in the tree inventory. Okay. Again, if there's anything we can do to help you, let us know. Okay. All right, environmental justice neighborhood planting grant. Um, someone was looking into that. I forget who. I don't have that written. Yeah, there's um, there's money available through the TD Bank uh, and the Arbor Day Foundation. Uh, they do a lot of focusing on environmental justice neighborhoods. Um, the DCR promotes they you know. Um, when you go through the urban forestry program and apply for one of their grants, you know, if you're working in an environmental justice neighborhood, it gets a higher ranking for tree planting. Um, you know, that would be some of the money that you were mentioning from um, Mindy that, uh, you know, they're not public ways. So, you know, we can't use the money we have for tree planting um, to plant there. But it, take, it would take coordination. So some of you would have to be reaching out to these neighborhoods. These It's mostly parking complexes, like the boulders, that area, um, that are not public the property. They're private. Um, and there's a, there's a big uh, need to educate the, the property owners on, the, on why trees are good. <laughs> a lot of them look at them as just something that takes more maintenance and makes a mess. Um, so, you know, we should be reaching out to these places now um, and seeing if they're interested. Do we need to apply for a grant from that? Or do well, we know it a deadline? Sounds like or... if, if Mindy has money, then we would need to let her know, you know, before the end of the year. I'm not sure what that money is or what the application process is. Um, but yes, with the state and with the Arbor Day Foundation, um, there is an application. Um, I'm Maybe not sure you. what the deadline is. It's usually uh, late, early spring sometime, um, I think. I have to look that up. Yeah. Um, the, the thing that it requires from us is somebody to you know, initiate the, the conversation with the property owners, um, you know, whether it's the, um, we talked about the housing authority place on Lower Main Street also. But so we need to reach out, we need to get a partner there. And then from there, we can say, all right, how many trees are we going to plant? And we can come up with a proposal. Before then, I don't think we, it's worth, you know, figuring out when the grant deadlines are. Is this similar to what we did? And we weren't at the boulders, we were at a, a complex next to the boulders, uh, maybe two years ago. Um, it was private property, but we planted a lot of trees there. Oh yeah, the brook. I think those were mostly donated trees, correct me if I'm wrong? Yes, they were donated yeah. trees. So we did it ourselves and Alan helped, but uh, mostly. Oh, okay. So, yeah. so somebody donated the trees to the brook and then we just planted for them. Is that right? Well, donated trees to us. And oh, we okay. Trees from Hadley Garden Center this year, like we got the trees from uh, Sugarloaf. So, yeah. Has anybody been back to look at that planting, see if we had any success? I went back a while ago and it was less than half were there still, but. Uh, yeah, I went back like a month ago and pretty much all the small ones just looked to be crushed by a mower, or, um, some sort of equipment. Um, some of the bigger ones on the main drive in made it, uh, but other than that, not many. Yeah, I'll try to swing by and look also. So, yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. We Not only do we need the property owner's permission to do it and to apply for a grant, but we would need their buy-in to uh, take care of the trees, as Alan was mentioning. So, yeah. And to communicate with the landscapers and the residents and so on and so forth, which 
obviously, if you're a big property owner, that takes time and money, which often they, even though they should, don't want to do. <laughs> would it, um, if we if we did something like this again, would it would it work to like just put little hardware uh, screening around around the baby trees so the lawnmowers are discouraged from hacking them down? I think that's a great idea. We could even like make little like square fences. I've seen them like the surround gardens and stuff. Yeah. 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 Sophie, you have your hand raised. Sophie. I'll allow you to talk. I thought you were allowed. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. So I was wondering, um, I'm totally just curious. Um, do you have a program or a protocol or some kind of like publication fact sheet for homeowners to be like, these are the benefits of the trees. Here are how you can plant them to also mitigate risk and cost and messiness and things people don't like. Like how do you how do you usually give people that information? We at least last time we went to the farmers market, we had a good bit of literature um educating but folks on that sort of thing. I don't know who has it currently. But... Shoshana, do you want to say anything? Not Shoshana, uh Ellen, sorry. Nope. No, okay. Henry, yeah, I'd, I'd like to add something to Sophie's question. Um, so I think um, a lot of the times we get somebody from within the within the complex or within the neighborhood, and they ask us if ask the town and ask the committee if um, you know could we plant trees there. So we have an inside person who helps coordinate between the property owner um, or the neighbors. And um, a lot of times neighborhoods have, you know, they have their own uh, network, email, whatever kind of exchange going on, what's happening in the neighborhood uh, or in the apartment complexes. And um, so we have a we have a pipeline to get information to people. Um, that's and then we have met them, you know, sometimes in the evening or on a day when people are available to actually discuss the planting and, and things like that, so. Yeah. And we do have some literature. I don't think we have anything exactly like you're saying, Sophie. Would that be something you might be interested in working on? Yeah, I can see that being helpful for people. Um, I have, I mean, I don't know, I don't know everything. I don't know a lot, but I've been taking um, a course about minimizing tree costs and maximizing benefits and that's just on my brain is something that sort of plays in as an availability of information issue okay um if you can send an email to the um the shade tree committee email address do you have that i can find it yeah and just um once we have your email i can try to send you what we do have in the way of literature that would be good thank you and then, yeah, that'd be great to think about. So, yeah, let's keep that as an idea. Uh, Ellen, make sure that's noted in the minutes. And uh, good. Anything else on environmental justice neighborhoods right now? No? Okay, so the old uh, ongoing items, state level initiatives, there's nothing to report on that. I haven't done anything. Um, Significant tree ordinance. Uh, Sarah's not here, but I don't think she's done anything on it. The solar bylaw group. Anything, Julian? Uh, not really. I am. Have, they have now changed their meeting time to be when I don't have uh work or school, so I can now attend. Um, and attended their last meeting. Um, and will attend their next meeting, but I don't have any updates currently. Okay. And the Mary Maple love letter exhibit, that's uh, Brit and she's not here. So I think we have completed the agenda. Uh, any comments from anyone on the committee? Yeah, I guess um, 
I don't know, just seeing that we, we probably, sh if we were going to do a love letter exhibit, this is the time to do it the year after the tree came down. Mm. So um, at the holiday season, obviously. And I don't know that it needs to stay on our agenda if it's not going to happen this okay. season. I'll contact Britt and see if she can do anything for this winter. Yeah. Is the new Mary Maple the um, maple on the South Common near where the farmer's market is? Yes, that's the yeah. uh, maple that's going to be lit this year. Okay. Um, I believe the plan was to go back to the North Common and, and light the Nori maple that's on the um, North Common. Got Once it. the construction is okay. finished. Great. Sounds good. All right. And then, uh, Pat, uh, you're here and you wanted to talk about trees along Bay Road in that area. Um, do you want to speak? Um, yes, I live at Applewood. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Why don't you say your last name too, please? Svetaka, S-V-E-T-A-K-A. -A. Okay. And I'm a resident at the Applewood community, and we're, we have a number of trees along um, Rolling Road that are ash trees that are dying that we heard were going to be taken down, and we were just wondering what might they be replaced with and what kind of schedule that might be on for replacement. Okay, thank you. Alan, do you want to talk to that first? Sure. Um, again, like I said earlier, we have had a lot of interest from that neighborhood um, about what's going on with the ash trees, why they're dying, what are you going to do to replant? Um, so it is you know, definitely on our radar and we are essentially right now just taking down ash trees around town as they decline from emerald ash borer, which is a non-native pest that's killing ash trees everywhere around here and in the Northeast, unfortunately. Um, there is really, only thing we can do to protect the trees would be to inject them every two to three years. Um, and we don't have the resources to do that. So we are hoping that um, maybe one of these trees that we're <laughs> Not treating is the miracle tree and is resistant mm -hmm. and doesn't get killed by emerald ash borer, but it's unlikely. Um, so we're taking the ash trees down as they decline. Um, and in neighborhoods like the Rambling Road neighborhood, um, where there's a lot of ash trees planted, um, we will be trying to plant you know, new trees um, to make up for that canopy loss. Uh, in the neighborhood. Yeah, so we can probably and, schedule a tree planting for some time next year. Um, you had asked in the email about what kinds of trees, um, being that the ashes are, you know, a large shade tree, we would probably look for other large shade trees. We do try to plant a diversity of trees and we don't always plant native because there's so many natives we can't plant, like the ashes now. So. Um, yeah, we will we'll be working on that in the spring. It's a, it's a challenging place to plant. There's a lot of underground utilities, even in the setback side, on the house side of the sidewalk, uh, not just in the grass belt. So um, there's a lot of underground utilities there, and it's going to be challenging to site trees. It can be done. It's just going to be, um, it looks like a nice wide open lawn, <laughs> but it's not underground. <laughs> I understand, yes. Uh, Speaking of ash trees, are there um, are there uh, species of ash trees that uh, are more resistant? Because I got one growing in my backyard that seems to be doing fine. Yeah. Um, to my knowledge, I don't believe there is. I believe all ash trees will succumb to emerald ash borer. Um, I don't believe there is one that's um, you know sort of resistant to it. Um, what side of town do you live in? North, south, south east. South, yeah, Potwine Lane. Okay, yeah. So most of the ash trees on Potwine Lane have already died, and we've taken them down. Um, so oh, sorry, that's Pomeroy. Pomeroy, I'm sorry, I'm talking about Potwine's. So North Amherst, um, the ash um, borer hasn't really hit that side of town as hard yet. It started in the southern side of town, 
mm. and is working its way across the town. Um, mm. So. Yeah, well, this one just um, appeared. I didn't plan it. It appeared about six or seven years ago, and it's uh, it looks pretty good so far. Yeah, that's great. Um, <laughs> you know, the uh, Emerald Ash Borer, you know, ash will, will, will sprout from the stump um, often. And um, so sometimes ash, Emerald Ash Borer will kill the top of the tree, but it doesn't kill the roots. Um, so the tree will re-sprout and it will grow for a couple of years until it gets large enough where the ash borer can actually get into the wood of the tree and, and they, um, start uh, feeding on it. So um, mm -hmm. hopefully we're not going to totally lose ash and some native species will, you know, pest will find they really like or disease will like killing emerald ash borer. And there'll be a new balance in nature and everything can coexist, but uh, not at the moment, not for a while. Okay. <laughs> they have uh, found woodpeckers feeding on emerald ash borer in the Midwest area. So, yeah. so anyway, yeah, it's a difficult thing to figure out what trees are going to survive with the climate changing and with the invasive things. So we try to plant a diversity. All right, any other comments about this issue or about anything else? I, um, Henry, I just want to ask, it just occurred to me, um, you know, uh, we need potentially, I would like to do a, another um, lecture next spring for Arbor Day. Yeah. And I'd like to coordinate with Amos College again, if possible, and other organizations. Um, so if, if you know if anybody knows of a particular speaker or somebody that you know can give a great presentation uh, that people would enjoy hearing or maybe they haven't heard before, um, let us know. We, now is the time to plan and reach out and and try to get um, somebody lined up for April um, every day. Yeah, Britt might have some contacts. So, a few years ago, I went to a really good. Um, lecture by a uh, apple tree guy a palmologist at the Pelham library and it was very well attended and he had like all the different kinds of apples to try and it was fun hey why don't you get his name to alan or reach out to him yourself yeah I'll, that would I'll be good at, good in the fall yeah in the fall when the apples are around to try <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I think of um, Doug Tallamy, who uh, you know wrote that book about oak trees. He's a, he's a good speaker. Tallamy, is that what? Yeah, T A L L A M Y, I believe. I think so. Yeah. And he he wrote a book that's called something like the nature of oaks, something like that. Thank you. Good. All right. Well, um, thank you, everyone. Thank you, uh, Brooks and Sophie and Pat for joining us. Um, we meet second Tuesday of the month, although next month we'll talk about if we're going to change that. And um, you're always welcome to write to us or join us for any of the events we do. And if you have ideas of things you want to actively pursue, then we're very happy. We're all volunteers and we're happy to get more people involved. So, Yeah. Thank you very much, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. All right, thanks. thanks. I will close the meeting now. Thank you. Bye.